Today marks 12 years since the beginning of the civil war in Syria. What began as civilian protests amid the Arab Spring uprisings of 2011 now by some estimates has killed at least half a million people, displaced millions more and destabilized the region. Adding calamity on top of disaster, last month's earthquakes laid waste to land already pummeled by the regime of Bashar al-Assad and his Russian patron, Vladimir Putin. In a moment, I'll speak with a longtime Syria analyst. But first, a look at what 12 years of war has wrought. In northwest Syria, a generation born into conflict. Children who've only known life at these refugee camps in a war that began before they were born, 12 years ago. For families like Umm Muhammad's, these years have meant loss after loss. Since 2011, we have suffered at all levels. My house was destroyed, my son was killed, and my second son was arrested 11 years ago. He's in the prisons of the Assad regime, and I do not have any information about him. Her family is from Ruta, near Damascus, under a severe siege, and where Assad's regime used chemical weapons in 2013, killing more than a 1,000 people. In eastern Ghouta, we were subjected to a lot of bombardment, hunger, and shortages of bread. We were living in famine because of the siege imposed by the forces of the Assad regime. She lives at this camp with her daughter-in-law, Um Omar, who has lost most of her family to Assad's airstrikes. 12 years ago, we were at home. A missile from a warplane fell on our house and was destroyed. My father, my brother, and my cousin were killed. Her children survived the siege and the earthquake, but their home was destroyed, forcing them here. We are on another journey of displacement. Look at the mud and dirt in this camp. My children don't have enough winter clothes, and there is no source of income to buy for them. Mona Zarawi is raising five children at this camp. Life here is hard. We are here, two families living in one tent. Children have no clothes or shoes. I have children of my own, and I am taking care of my deceased sister's orphans. Aya was born in Sarakeb city in the northwest as it was bombed by Assad. Her parents were killed. She is now as old as the war itself. When the earthquake happened, I thought we were being bombed by airplanes. I know all about bombing, and I'm afraid of its sound. But the man behind that bombing is still in charge. Today, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad met with his strongest ally, Russian President Vladimir Putin, in Moscow, offering support for his war in Ukraine. In rebel-held northwest Syria, thousands of Syrians also mark this day, chanting slogans against the regime and waving the revolutionary flags. It all began in 2011, when pro-democracy protests swept Syria in the wake of the Arab Spring. But Bashar al-Assad's brutal crackdown triggered a civil war that's left a trail of destruction, a country in ruins, and forced millions of Syrians to flee their homes, many on boats to Europe and further afield. Tens of thousands of people disappeared, many of them presumed tortured and killed in government prisons. The tragic twin earthquakes that struck northern Syria on February 6th further tormented a people already ravaged by war and have also opened diplomatic doors for Bashar al-Assad after years of international isolation. Arab countries are slowly restoring ties with Damascus, but Syrians continue to struggle. Over 12 million people, more than half the population, are food insecure. People there are really tired of, of the war and now the earthquake and of having to live you know, on a razor's edge. Jonathan Dumont leads emergency communications at the World Food Program. He visited Syria this week and found people in dire need. The situation is, is pretty, pretty drastic. And as you can imagine, with schools and playgrounds being used to shelter people, there's not much, uh, you know, not many prospects for, for the next generation to uh, develop as, the, as they should. Syria needs the continued support of the international community. Uh, it needs resources. It needs infrastructure. It needs a lot of help. There are some signs that help is on the way, but nowhere near enough. In the meantime, Bashar al-Assad and his regime continue to hold power, continue the killing, and all these years later, there is still no end in sight. 
Murhaf Jojati is a distinguished visiting professor at the United States Naval Academy. A native of Syria, he has written widely on Assad and this decade plus of war. Murhaf Jojati, thank you for joining us. Those earthquakes last month, as we just saw, were absolutely devastating on top of 12 years of war. Help us understand the extent of the devastation, the extent of the crisis that Syrians face today. It is earthquake upon earthquake. Uh, the latest earthquake, of course, uh, was a disaster, a catastrophe, a natural catastrophe. Uh, but this follows, as you said, 12 years uh, of war uh, in which uh, half of the Syrian population has been made either refugee or internally displaced. Uh, over a million Syrian civilians killed. Uh, roughly 90 percent of the infrastructure has been destroyed. So it has been truly for Syria for the, in the past 12 years a calamity after another. Do we know today if the disaster aid, the emergency aid that has been making its way in, is it going to the people who need it most? It is really too little and too late. Uh, whatever assistance has gone in was for the most part taken uh, by pro-Iranian militias at the airport of Aleppo and either used by them and or sold on the market. And so those who are most deserving of this international assistance have not gotten uh, uh, much. Uh, they are relying on their own very, very thin resources. What does this moment mean for Bashar al-Assad? I mean, we have seen he's been largely isolated, right, over the last several years because of his brutal response to the opposition. Is he now using this moment to reemerge onto the world stage? He has moved from a distance of uh, having Syria suspended from the Arab League for its brutality, of being a pariah state and uh, shunned by the, the, the international community to take advantage of this earthquake. And there have been uh, Arab delegations that have visited Damascus after the earthquake, trying to get Syria back into the Arab fold. So Assad is uh, the dictator, the brutal dictator that he is, is fully taking advantage of the earthquake in order to rehabilitate himself before the international community. It's difficult to see uh, a brutal dictator like Assad use this moment, this natural disaster, to, as you said, rehabilitate himself on, on the world stage. I'm curious what you think the United States and the international community, what more they could say or do at this moment and how they should be responding. I think the U.S. has taken a a uh, wise policy, uh, using sanctions as a, an instrument, as a diplomatic instrument, uh, in order to punish the Assad regime. The United States and the EU have taken, I think, wise positions vis-à-vis -vis Assad. Uh, it is uh, some of the Arab states that are trying to get him back into the fold under the, uh, m the illusion uh, that uh, he will diminish Iranian influence in Syria. I don't think that is happen, uh, going to happen. Uh, Iran is uh, a conspirator in the mass murder of Syrians with Russia. So I think a continuation of the isolation of the Assad regime uh, has to be done. Uh, the Assad regime is truly a rotten apple. It's about to fall from the tree. There is no need, no sense in propping it up. What about the people of Syria, Morhaf? We began our report with these children who have only ever known a life in which their country is at war. It began before they were even born. What does their future look like? Very bleak. For the past 10 years, they have not been to school. So imagine what a generation is going to, to follow this one. They have known nothing but brutality and war. Um, you know, when Assad says that he will leave the moment he feels his people don't want him anymore, well, when you have half the population that has been made refugee, I don't know what kind of legitimacy he thinks he has. I think he has zero legitimacy. And in that sense, I think the international community should continue isolating him until his regime goes away, 
because his regime, we have to say, has been a major source of instability, not only in Syria, but also in the Middle East. Morhaf Shujati, Distinguished Visiting Professor at the United States Naval Academy, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.